Good morning, everyone. This is Dean Rocky Duhuko, delivering another lecture for you guys. And this time, it is on political law about the executive department. The provisions on the executive department are contained in Article 7 of the 1987 Constitution. This is part three of my lecture. So just to recap, uh, in part one, what we learned is the nature of the executive power and upon whom it is vested. Also, we have learned ano yung mga qualifications ng president and vice president. So basically, general principle principles about the executive department. So part two naman, what we learned would be the difference between the term and the tenure of the president. Gano nga ba kahaba ang term ng isang president? Qualified ba siya? for re-election. And also, we have learned no, uh, what would happen in case the president is not elected, not chosen, or is not qualified. Diba? What will happen? Or in case of a vacancy in the offices of the president and the vice president, sino ang papalit? Or ano ang posibleng mangyari? And in these instances, we have also learned the difference between an actually elected president and an acting president or a president that succeeded in acting capacity only. So temporary lang. No? So for this part three, as we go through the sections, ang mahalagang matandaan natin from the previous uh, lectures would be the difference between term and tenure and also the difference between an elected president and an acting president. So for this afternoon, we will lecture about sections 11 to 15. Um, for section 11, this discusses the temporary disability of the president. No? Um, about the temporary disability, how did section 11 discuss this? Actually, if you read section 11, it discusses who will declare that the president is temporarily disabled or that there is a temporary disability on the part of the president. So, dalawa yung pwedeng mag-declare. No? So, uh, by the way, if you look at my slides, yung mga naka-bold no, na letters, those represent the actual provisions of the 1987 Constitution. And those texts that are not in, in both uh, font, yun yung mga explanations natin. All right? So, again, uh, under Section 11, this tells us who will declare that the president has a temporary disability. So, first, it's possible that the temporary disability will be declared by the president himself. So, siya mismo ang magsasabi. How does he do that? Under Section 11, whenever the president transmits to the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, take note, dalawa yung padadalan niya ng written declaration. Okay? Both the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House. Hindi pwedeng isa lang. Dapat dalawa. What does he transmit? He must transmit his written declaration that he is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. No? So, um, in this case, kailangan written declaration ang ipadala niya. Hindi pwedeng tumawag lang siya na Dear President, Dear Senate President, or Dear Speaker, Mr. Speaker, hindi na po ako makapag-discharge. Hindi pwede yon. Dapat ang ipadala niya ay written declaration. Alright? At ang nilalaman ng written declaration is that he is already unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. Siya mismo ang nagsabi na hindi na niya kayang ma-discharge ang powers ng office of the president. Right? And until when? When will this last? Kasi nga sabi natin, temporary disability. So it is not a permanent disability, it's only temporary. So the question is, until when? No? So it will last until he transmits again to the Senate President and Speaker of the House a written declaration ulit to the contrary na kaya na niya. No? So again, 
how does he tell the President of the Senate and the Speaker through a written declaration na hindi na niya kaya? And kung kaya na niya ulit, again, he must transmit another written declaration na kaya na niyang i-discharge uh, of powers and duties of the office of the President. And in the meantime, what will happen? Remember during this time, no, between the initial transmission and the second transmission of a written declaration, he is deemed as temporarily disabled. No, there is a temporary disability on the part of the president. So who will become president at that time? Sabi sa section 11, such powers and duties shall be discharged by the vice president, but take note only as acting president, meaning temporary lang. Kung magiging enabled na ulit ang president, babalik na si VP acting president to his or her VP post. Kasi nga acting president lang siya. Alright? Next. It's also possible no, that the president will not declare his disability himself. So in such case, sino ang iba pang pwedeng mag-declare that the president is temporarily disabled? It's possible that this will be done by the members of the cabinet, ng gabinete. So how do they do this naman? Whenever a majority, take note, hindi lahat kailangan na, only a majority of all the members of cabinet transmit, kanino ulit? Same, to the Senate President and to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, their written declaration that the President is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, anong mangyayari pag ginawa yun ng majority ng all members of cabinet? Again, it is the Vice President who will assume the powers and duties of the office as acting President. Acting President lang ulit. Kasi again, this covers a situation na temporary disability lang naman. Alright? But what if sabi ng majority ng members of the cabinet ay may temporary disability ang president but the president does not agree? What can the president do? So in case he does not agree, okay, uh, the president can also transmit to the President of the Senate and to the Speaker of the House, a written declaration that no inability exists. Hindi totoo na may temporary disability, sabi ng President. No? Once he does this, na nagpadala siya ng written declaration to the Senate President and to the Speaker of the House, he shall reassume the powers and duties of his office. Magbabalik siya bilang Presidente. Okay? Meanwhile, no, eto na naman. So, sabi ng members ng cabinet, majority nila sabi, oh, the president is unable to discharge. Sabi ni president, no such inability exists. What can happen? And again, another majority, no, hindi another, the a majority of all the members of the cabinet can transmit again within five days to the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House, their written declaration that the President is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. And then what will happen next? Congress shall decide on the issue. Diba? So ano bang nangyari kasi? Ulitin natin ha. Majority of the members of the cabinet sabi nila, President is unable to discharge. Sabi ni President, no inability exists. Kaya ko. And then afterwards, majority of all the members of the cabinet, again, transmitted within five days. Nasabi nila si President is unable to discharge the powers. So, para matigil na yung pagpapalitan, no? kaya, hindi kaya, hindi kaya, kaya. No? Congress shall now decide on the issue. And for that purpose, Congress shall convene, if not in session, within 48 hours. Right? So what will happen? So ano ang decision ng Congress in case of dispute? If the Congress within 10 days after the receipt of the last written declarations, remember uh, both cabinet, both majority members of the cabinet and the president must transmit written declarations to the Senate President and to the Speaker of the House. 
So within 10 days after the receipt of the last written declaration, or kung hindi sila in session within 12 days after it is required to assemble, Congress must determine by a two-thirds vote of both houses voting separately if the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties. Now, kung madetermine nila na the president is really unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, it is now the vice president who shall act as the president. If Congress, on the other hand, decides that the president can discharge his powers and duties, it is now the president who shall continue exercising the powers and duties of his office. And remember guys, again, under Section 11, this is only for temporary disability. Okay? Next, how about for serious illness of the president? Now, as you can remember now in recent history, diba, whenever President Bongbong Marcos is hit by COVID-19, ina-announce siya no, ng media. Now, oh, the president has COVID-19 and he is recuperating, etc., etc. Bakit? Actually, this is not just a matter of news, but a matter of duty. Because this is required under the Constitution. So under Section 12, what does it say? In case of serious illness of the President, the public shall be informed of the state of his health. The members of the Cabinet in charge of, ano lang, hindi naman lahat, no? hindi naman lahat nandun na sa kanya by his bedside. Uh, yung members of the Cabinet lang na in charge of national security foreign relations, and the chief of staff of the armed forces shall not be denied access to the president during such illness. So tatlong tao lang, hindi naman buong cabinet, nadadalawin <laughs> siya. So tatlo lang ang hindi pwedeng i-deny ng access to the president during such illness. So yung national security, foreign relations, and chief of staff of the AFP, sila lang. Okay? So this provision tells us when the public should be informed of the president's state of health. It is not even required that the that the illness is something na debilitating or such a uh, such seriousness na hindi na siya maka-discharge no. Uh, it just so happen na ang requirement lang ay in case of serious illness of the president. No? It is not required that the illness should incapacitate the president. Basta dapat informed lang tayo sa kanyang state of health. Right? Section 13 tells us about prohibitions. Ano yung mga hindi pwedeng gawin ng mga executive officers ng president, ng vice president, and members of the cabinet? Sabi dito, the president, vice president, and members of the cabinet. So yung ating mga department secretary. And their deputies or assistants shall not, unless otherwise provided in this constitution, hold any other office or employment during their tenure. Bawal silang magkaroon ng ibang trabaho or hold any other office. But remember, di ba, when we studied part one, the vice president can actually be appointed as a cabinet secretary. Eh sabi naman dito, ang president, vice president, members of the cabinet, unless otherwise provided in this in, in this constitution, bawal. Pero pag sinabi ng constitution na pwede, eh di pwede. Alright? So, they shall not during the said tenure, directly or indirectly, practice any other profession, participate in any business, so bawal silang magnegosyo in the meantime, or be financially interested in any contract with or in any franchise or special privilege granted by the government or any subdivision agency instrumentality thereof, including government-owned or controlled corporations or their subsidiaries. They shall strictly avoid conflict of interest in the conduct of their office. Take note, what I want to highlight this is bawal to under itong third uh, line here, sorry. Bawal siya during their tenure. And again, as we have previously 
learned, tenure means their actual service in office. So while they are in office, that is their tenure. Bawal nilang gawin itong mga ito. So as you can see, it's broken down into the five bullets here, prohibitions during their office. Itong not practice any other profession, if you guys remember, President Duterte is also a lawyer by profession. So while he was president, syempre hindi siya pwedeng uh, tumanggap ng mga kaso at mag-appear sa court. No? Hindi siya pwedeng mag-abogado. Hindi siya pwedeng mag-notaryo. He cannot practice his profession. Okay? Hindi rin uh, ang president, vice president, members of the cabinet cannot participate directly or indirectly in any business. They cannot be financially interested in any government contract, franchise, or special privilege. Anong example ng franchise? Di ba yung mga TV station, binibigyan sila ng franchise kung naalala nyo, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, a president, vice president, and members of the cabinet cannot be financially interested, hindi sila pwedeng mag-invest, hindi sila pwedeng mag-part owner, no, in a TV station. Bawal kasi magpo-fall under 'yon sa franchise, right? So what is the purpose of this prohibition? Bakit ba pinagbawalan ng constitution na magkaroon ng ganito ang president, vice president and members of the cabinet? This is to ensure that the officials mentioned will devote their full time and attention to their official duties. Dapat yung official duties lang nila ang ginagawa nila. It will prevent them from extending special favors to their own private businesses also, which comes under their official jurisdiction. Siyempre, kung meron silang financial interest in any business or government contract franchise special privilege, it can give the appearance of conflict of interest. Diba? And in a way, this prohibition assures the public that they will be faithful and dedicated in the performance of their functions. Okay? So aside from those mentioned in Section 13, President, Vice President, members of the cabinet and their deputies or assistants, sino pa yung ibang officials na subject to a similar prohibition? This will also apply to members of Congress, constitutional commissions, the ombudsman, bawal din. Uh, because the constitution, the constitution wants to stress the principle that a public office is a public trust. Right? So aside from this, yung mga bawal na gawin or maging business or gawin ng president, vice president, ano pa ang mga ibang prohibition under section 13? Sabi dito, the spouse and relatives by consanguinity or affinity within the fourth civil degree of the president, diba, shall not during his tenure, tenure na naman, be appointed as members of the Constitutional Commission, Office of the Ombudsman, Secretaries of the Cabinet, Undersecretary, Chairman or Heads of Bureaus or Offices, including government-owned or controlled corporations and their subsidiaries. Isa-isahin natin. No? Uh, remember, this is about the prohibition on nepotism. Bawal mag-appoint ng mga kamag-anak. So, anong sabi dito? The spouse, yung asawa ng president, hindi pwede. Relatives by consanguinity or affinity. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Consanguinity is kadugo. Pinsan ko mismo, uncle ko mismo, no? ibig sabihin kapatid ng magulang ko, or auntie ko mismo, lolo, lola, apo, apo ko. Yun ang mga posibleng kamag-anak sa dugo. Right? Affinity means kamag-anak ng asawa mo. Naging kamag-anak mo na rin sila through affinity. So yung uh, lolo ng lolo lola ng asawa mo, pamangkin ng lolo ng asawa mo, no? Uh, pinsan, falls under the fourth civil degree also. So kahit hindi mo kadugo, pero kung mag-anak naman ng asawa mo, bawal na rin yun kasi by affinity. Take note, 
Until when is this prohibition enforced? It shall not be allowed during his tenure. So again, while the president is in office, hindi pwedeng mag-appoint ng mga taong ito. No? Um, the president is prohibited from making such appointments. Okay? Next, ito naman, under Section 14, appointments made by the acting president. What is an acting president? Sabi natin in Part 2, an acting president is only the president in a temporary capacity. While the actual president is to be elected, is to be chosen, is to be qualified. No? So in the meantime, meron munang magiging acting president. Does the acting president become the permanent president? Generally, no. Diba? Babalik siya sa dati niyang pwesto once the actual president has been elected, qualified, or chosen. So, anong sabi dito sa section 14? Because even if a person is only an acting president, this person exercises the full, in full capacity the duties and powers of the office of the president. No? Pwede niyang i-discharge lahat ng functions. Acting president siya eh, right? Pero sabi sa section 14, appointments extended by an acting president shall only remain effective pero pwedeng i-revoke by the elective, elected president rather within 90 days from his assumption or reassumption of office. So si acting president pwedeng mag-appoint. Yes, pwede siyang mag-appoint uh, ng mga pwedeng appoint ni president. However, the elected president can revoke the appointments made by the acting president within 90 days from his assumption or reassumption of office. Bakit? No? Uh, the acting president is only acting as such in his temporary capacity. The acting president is not the incumbent president. Hindi siya ang magiging president to serve the unexpired portion of the term of the president because there is only a temporary vacancy. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, once the elected president actually assumes or reassumes the office, pwede niyang i-review yung appointments na ginawa ni acting president. Okay? Um... In this case, diba, the Constitution deems the 90-day period for the elected president once he assumes or reassumes the office to be sufficient for him to determine and study the appointments made by the acting president. Okay. Next, in Section 15, last na guys, this is about prohibited appointments. Ano ba itong mga prohibited appointments? Take note, two months immediate, immediately before two months immediately before the next presidential elections, up to the end of, of his term, a president or acting president. So it doesn't matter anymore kung talagang incumbent president siya or acting president siya. Right? They cannot make appointments anymore. Two months immediately before the next presidential election. Hindi lang up to the hindi lang two months before the end of his term, ha. Remember the elections happen in May, and the end of their term happens on June 30. So kailan mag-start yung prohibition? Two months before May. Hindi two months before June 30, ha. So it happens in March. So by March, hindi na pwedeng magkaroon ng appointments. What is the rule? No? Actually, the appointments made two months before the presiden presidential elections is what we call midnight appointments also. What is the reason for this? This is based on the principle that after the election of a new president, so meron ng president-elect. Diba remember, iba ang ibig sabihin ng president-elect? sa acting president, sa president. We we have studied that. Alright? So, 
the prohibition on midnight appointments is based on the principle that after the election of a new president, the outgoing president becomes no more than a caretaker na lang or administrator whose duty is to prepare for the orderly transfer of authority to the incoming president. Yun na yung trabaho niya para na lang magkaroon ng orderly transition. Take note, this prohibition covers only appointments to the executive department to avoid partisan politics. Kasi baka mamaya maglagay siya ng mga kapartido niya, di ba? E di yung bagong president maging stuck naman doon sa kanyang mga na-appoint na kapartido niya, di ba? So take note, the prohibition covers only appointments to the executive department. So can the president or acting president still make appointments to the judiciary? Pwede pa din. No? If you can see, dito sa section 15, ang sabi lang ay bawal ang appointment sa executive position. Okay? So, there, are there exceptions to this rule? Yes. No? Two months immediately, bawal mag-appoint. Except temporary appointments to executive positions when continued vacancies therein will prejudice public service or endanger public safety. So for the exceptions to apply, ano yung tatlong requisites based on this last portion? Number one, the appointment must be temporary and in nature, pansamantala lang. Two, it must be two executive positions. And three, the appointment is urgent in the interest of public service or public safety. All right? And with that, we end here. So thank you guys. And please watch out for part four. No? So if you want to follow me for more updates, please follow me on Twitter at WhatRakuThinks. And thank you for supporting this channel because as you can see in the channel description, all the proceeds from this channel will be donated to the students for the bar ops, for the bar review, for, for the board review, and for all other needs of the students. So salamat po sa pagsuporta and see you again in the next lecture. Salamat po.